You all know who Lady Gaga is, right? Yes. Please say yes. 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 Well, <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago, I was watching Saturday Night Live, and uh, she was the musical guest artist, and I think it was Ryan Reynolds who was the guest actor for the night. And she got on stage, and I thought, oh, great. There's another mainstream artist out there just giving us some produced, manufactured music again. But she stopped in the middle of her performance and stood up, and she's wearing this humongous, strange, like, galactic, I don't know, it was a sci-fi sort of outfit. She walked over to the piano and sat down and started just playing the piano like she'd been playing for years. And it was evident that she has played the piano for years, and she has a really good musical background. So that got me thinking, well, um, if I didn't have that exposure to classical music or other genres um, in general, I probably wouldn't have had the chance to appreciate Lady Gaga for what she had, the, had to offer in terms of the non-techno, non-dance side of her skills. So I got to see Lady Gaga's talent. And now all of you are not really composers or artists, but I, if by appreciating other genres, you might actually ultimately encourage your favorite artists to become better in this really super competitive market. First, by appreciating music, well, that's a good place to start, right? We all appreciate music. Maybe we could expand that a little bit more. Musical knowledge also encourages musical musical innovation or creativity. And finally, no appreciation and a lack of musical knowledge will eventually lead to lack of creativity in the long run. To begin, I'm sure you've heard classical music before. <laughs> the sort of uh, lots of vibrato and women on the stage with gigantic dresses just singing out. So uh, this actually is called bel canto. And that I believe translates to beautiful voice or beautiful song. I can't quite remember. And so I'm going to demonstrate just for one little moment. <laughs> I'm not really a, a performer performer tonight. Um, this is Caro Mio Ben by Giordani, and um, it was composed in the 1700s. So I'm just going to sing a, a line from that. So bear with me here. <laughs> That's all I'm going to sing for you right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not warmed up or anything. So. Thank you. <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, so, as I said, in the 1700s, Giordani composed that, um, that piece of music. And he actually was um, part of this movement of London where they craved Italian opera, opera. They were just, please give us more Italian opera. So, he really thrived in that environment and moved to London just composed there pretty much for the rest of his life. And so this demand for creativity leads to creativity. So now you are wondering what I was hiding under this uh, paper here. This is a jaw harp. Someone knows what it is. Does anyone else know what this is? Okay. Uh, it originally was called, um, in some parts of the country, I think it was called a Jew harp, but that's kind of, um, <laughs> it's, I'm not sure why it was called that, but eventually it's kind of morphed into the harp. And, um, okay, so I'm just going to demonstrate really quick here. Okay, so that's essentially what the jaw harp sounds like, and there is a, a, in world music, there is a traveling musician I've just recently found, his name is Rise, I believe, and uh, he plays an instrument similar to this called the Morchang, and that's part of the world, world music exposure, and it's super fun, and I can give you guys the link later if you want to check out his video online. He actually incorporates a lot of kind of techno, all with one instrument. So it's really fun. Um, so this is an, ex an excuse me an example of innovation in music. Who would have thought, you know, this little thing could make so much, so much awesome noise? 
Um, so now I have your attention, right? <laughs> uh, expanding knowledge leads to more inspiration. So for example, in Western music, uh, religion was a very integral part of the household. And so daily life, your farming, it was a very agrarian sort of culture. And religion actually was just, uh, just as much a part of that as the farming. So routine and um, you wake up, you um, pray, could be possible. Um, so what happened was composers, they started during this bel canto or classical era, they built what is called solfeggio. And solfeggio is the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, you know that. And um, they would build these vocal exercises for their vocal students who ultimately would be singing their, their pieces. So obviously they want their, um, their music to sound as good as it, as it can sound. Um, so eventually these solfeggio exercises made their way into religious music. And so therefore, uh, people who were practicing religion eventually heard this music migrating into their religious text. And therefore, they were learning music foundations, mu the foundation of music without, without even realizing it. So therefore, again, they just didn't realize that they were um, uh, expanding their musical knowledge. And um, because they were one u working unit, um, it's no surprise that oral tradition was a key way that um, musical foundation or knowledge was passed down from generation to generation. Um, this is evident in the United States, for example, where bluegrass, uh, although it's not a vocal um, specific uh, genre, bluegrass uh, carried down from generation to generation the um, key ideas of um, unique vocal harmonies and banjo, which is actually um, an African-American slave idea that was brought over to this country. Um, Johnny Cash also is an example of oral tradition, and Pink Floyd can be seen as knowing the fundamentals of music. It's just obvious. If you ever get a chance, go listen to their music sometime. And, <coughs> excuse me, so ultimately, having a musical foundation and innovation leads to inspiration. And without it, we end up listening to artists such as this. Does anyone know who this is? If you're ever on Facebook, I'm probably running over time here. Uh, if you're ever on Facebook, this is Rebecca Black. Um, ultimately, she represents manufactured music, and um, she, let's try to get away from that. So in conclusion, <laughs> in conclusion, although all of you might not be artists or musicians, I encourage you uh, to understand that you as an individual can change how your favorite artists uh, create music for us. So first, appreciating classical music is one key way to do that. Uh, why not take a chance and listen to some Bach or Mozart, along with Lady Gaga, of course. Um, next, by appreciating fundamental music forms of music, you as the listener are better equipped uh, to demand that creativity. I may have mentioned that already. Um, finally, do you really want manufactured artists such as Rebecca Black remaining, remaining with us always and representing us? Um, remember that there's always one particular song that speaks to you, and it's, it's obviously not any of these mm -hmm. from her. So Friday. I offer yeah. job harp lessons <laughs> every Thursday. Are you ready to challenge and uh, create some inspiration for your uh, artists? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> it's a stop. I got so thrown off. Stop. Oh, it was over nine.